Hello everyone, I'm here at Electronica 2024 and today I'm pleased to be joined by Leon Uldugon who is the CEO of RF Beam and today we're going to be talking about the company and more specifically it's VLD1. So Leon, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much that I can be here. Oh, brilliant. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Okay, yeah, my name is Leon. I studied electrical engineering, uh, communication engineering in St. Gallen, Switzerland. And uh, after the study, I uh, uh, built my own first uh, company. And in 2007, we then built uh, myself and together with a colleague, RF Beam. And since then, we are, I would say, quite successful on the market with Radar Solutions. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about the company. Uh, the company RF Beam, we are located in Switzerland, 22 persons, and we are a little bit in between semiconductor companies and the end user because uh, if you are working in the radar field for end users, it's not so easy to use the chipsets because of the high frequencies you use or you need simulation tools, you need measurement equipments and all these things. What typically the end user who want to use radar does not have. And RF Beam is a little bit in between. We are helping the semiconductor companies to sell their products. And on the other side, we're helping the end user to get the product, what they can use, including certification and all these things. So what would you say is the, the, the core um, values and missions that, that drive your operations? So we are working in very different fields. So we have communication, we have industrial application, but we also have automotive. And if we look in the radar field, a lot of money uh, was flowing the last years in, uh, from automotive into the semiconductor field to develop these ICs, these MMICs, these, these radar chips. Mm -hmm. And now these semiconductor companies are interested to also use it in a broader field, industrial, com uh, consumer application, and so on. And uh, this is also a little bit our mission to bring in technology what was used, developed for automotive, for example, special antennas, waveguide antennas, or also signal processing algorithms to other fields, to industrial and uh, commercial application. Excellent. So following on from that then, can you elaborate on the range of, of radar sensors and RF you know, engineering services that you offer? So on one side we have standard products. So this means these are products what can be bought from DigiKey uh, and these can be used for simple application, a movement detect uh, detection or finding out where in a room a person is or also for an intrusion alarm. Uh, and on the other side, we also offer engineering services. So this means a customer comes to RF Beam and has, for example, a good idea. I want to detect an avalanche with radar. Can you build me such a radar? And this is what RF Beam is doing. Excellent. Do you get that request often? <laughs> um, I got it quite often <laughs> during the last days, yes. <laughs> so what would you say differentiates your products compared to the competitors out there in the market? Mm. So. We are doing radar modules. So as I said before, it is a little bit in between the semiconductor company and the end user. There are many companies what are developing chips, for example, but not the modules. Chips are a little bit more difficult to use. There are, of course, also other companies what are developing modules, but we try to be closer to the end user. So serving uh, smaller quantities users. Smaller quantities means a few thousand, a few ten thousand. So really serving these ones because many other companies what are doing perhaps similar things are serving much larger customers like Automotive. Mm. I'm interested to hear how you approach um, sort of research and development to stay at the forefront of the market. That's a very important thing because what we are also seeing is that we are getting more and more competition also from Asian markets. Uh, there are many semiconductors com uh, coming now from there, but also many modules. And our strategy is not to fight against them. Our strategy is more uh, to be ahead of them using the most actual chipsets, using the most actual technologies. So for example, there are not only the well-known semiconductor companies what are doing RF radar chipsets. There are perhaps also startups what are doing this. And in our products, we are also using their products because we think this gives us the possibility to being ahead, others ahead, for example, Asian companies. And, and speaking of products, let's focus on the um, VD, uh, sorry, VLD1 um, Correct, sensor. Yes. So what motivated the, the development of this and, and how does it address um, market needs? Mm -hmm. 
So with radar, you can do different things. You can measure a speed. Most probably you already got the speed ticket. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> responsible for this. Uh, but you can also measure distances. And measuring distances is especially in industrial application, a very important thing. For example, uh, if you have a tank, a water tank, an oil tank, finding out how much is inside. And perhaps there is also a liquid what you do not want to touch with your sensor system. And here, radar can be a big help. And as said before, you can do it with a, a radar chip what is available on the market, but the VLD1 comes one step closer to the customer. It is a module, has a digital output. You can read it out over a serial port, and this information what you're getting out there tells you 1.23 meter, what is directly the level. So it makes it much easier for a user to use that technology. And, and as you say, it offers um, millimeter level accuracy. So oh. what, what advancements have enabled you to, to get this precise? So resolution in radar technology is linked to bandwidth. And bandwidth, unfortunately, is linked to regulation. So there are many nice things what you could do, but you're not allowed to. Um, but there are also other techniques uh, in software, in the signal processing, how you can enhance the, the resolution. So, Easily said, if you are building a standard radar with a standard algorithm at 60 gigahertz, you will perhaps reach a resolution 2-3 centimeters. For a large tank, this might be good enough, but if you have a small oil tank at home and you want to know uh, how much oil is inside, 2-3 uh, centimeters, this is already several hundred liters uh, and you want to have it more precise. Mm -hmm. And there are additional information in the, in the radar output, what you can extract with a good signal processing to get the millimeter resolution. In this case, it's, for example, phase information, what is inside the radar signal. And it also has a very um, sort of small form factor as well. So it's 12 by 16 um, millimeters. So what benefit does that offer when, when it's being integrated into various applications? Yeah, so we can see the module here. It's really a very tiny thing. And uh, a small form factor helps the user to keep his product small. So for example, if the end user is building an IoT device, he do not want to have it very large. It needs to be battery operated. It needs to, to fit in a small space. And this module is directly solderable uh, with a reflow and SMD process to the user's PCB board and then the small form factor definitely helps. And you've, you, you just mentioned the, the IoT, but are there, there are other applications or industries that you see particularly benefiting from this? Um, with such a sensor, you have several applications, IoT, but also industrial application, for example, also an obstacle detection. If you have a, a mower or something like this, seeing if there is an obstacle and not hitting the obstacle to detect it, mm -hmm. seeing it perhaps already one, two centimeter before, this is the ideal product for this. Fantastic. And, and can you give us um, some examples of how it's been used to to enhance um, performance or efficiency in, in sort of more specific use cases? Yes. Let's stay with the tank, the tank level application. Uh, radar also has the possibility to go through some materials. So for example, plastic materials or glass, this is transparent for radar. So this allows having such a sensor also outside the tank and still be able to detect the liquid, the level of the liquid inside. So you don't need to drill a hole inside. For example, for explosive uh, substances, uh, what can be in the tank, this can be a big benefit. Okay, fantastic, thank you. And can you tell us more about the, the plastic lens? You've, you've mentioned it yes. a little bit already, but how does it enhance the product sensor capabilities? What is interesting with radar that uh, the frequencies are quite high and uh, similar possibilities as what you have with optics can also be applied with radar. So such a, a product has a quite wide beam. What does it mean? We are looking in, in a volume and we can detect the distance to all objects inside this volume. But if I want to do a level sensing or if I want to measure the distance of one particular object, I need to focus the beam. Mm -hmm. And focusing a beam can be made with a lens, a piece of plastic, what can be 3D printed or injection molded. And this can be just placed over our radar transceiver also thanks to the fact that this is very small. And with this lens, we are creating a more narrow beam. And how big the beam is, what is the opening angle, is just defined by the lens. A cheap, simple plastic part. Sorry. That's now gone. <laughs> it's now gone, yeah. No, fantastic. And um, no, that's brilliant. Thank you for bringing it along to demonstrate. Um, and it's been great to learn um, about sort of the journey the, the company's gone. 
What is your plan for the next five years? What can we expect from you? Radar is, in my opinion, still a very booming market. Um, in automotive industry, we see that the money flow has reduced a little bit, but I do not think that this will be the case in industrial and in commercial application. So this means the, the penetration of radar in this kind of application in these fields will become larger in the next years. Thanks also to advertisement of big semiconductor companies what are advertising their chips in these markets. But I think with these chips and with the, the fact that many engineers are now working with this technology, there will also come more ideas where can radar be used, not only for a distance measurement or for just a speed measurement, how fast have you been driving. I think there are also other applications what are now popping up more and more. And the, the mission of RF Beam is to serve these applications with modules to make it for an end user as simple as possible to use the radar technology without having the need, oh, I need to design an antenna, oh, why do I need an RF substrate, or what is the difference between an RF substrate and the standard one? That's the mission from RF Beam, and I think this is also what we can serve very good in the next years. And what about your partnership with DigiKey? How do you see that helping with your mission? Uh, DigiKey is for us a very, very important partner because this allows that such modules are available to engineers all over the world. Because every engineering starts typically with an idea, with an engineer what needs 5 or 10 or 100 of these devices, small quantities, to build a prototype. And DigiKey can serve small quantities but also mass quantities for these customers all over the world. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your insights, Leon. It's been really interesting to learn about the company, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you very much that I had the chance to be here. You're welcome. Thank you.